I wrote my first major article about China in 1992, called why, which is 27 years ago, called Why the Economic Reform Will Succeed in China and Fail in Russia. And many people said to that time, why, why are you so interested in China? China's a rather poor country. I said, because it's got to correct economic policy. You just watch. If it continues to pursue the correct policy, it may be a poor country now, but it won't be soon. And now, now you can see. Now, no, now nobody says, why are you interested in China? Every day there are hundreds of articles in the Western media published about the, the question of China. The most incredible is to see the, the changes which have been in China. I mean, I, I was able to, you know, I was right about China and predicting success, but the first time I came to China was in 2005, and since then the changes are incredible. I mean, I was teaching in, uh, in, in Shanghai for when I first came here, and I used to go from Shanghai to Beijing, and this is a day with air travel and very annoying. Now I can go on the super high-speed train. Now I, I, I'm a very old-fashioned person because I still use cash, you see. And, um, and no, no young Chinese person uses cash anymore. And this is because uh, of the fact that the, the development which has taken place on that. I've seen the development on, on social media, we, WeChat, right, you know. I don't have to give people, I do give people my business card, but it's not really the, what most sensible. The most best thing to do is everybody communicates by WeChat. I can tell you it was very funny because because I work in China. I sometimes have to make money transactions between uh, between Britain and China, so I have to go into a Chinese bank. And I was there with a Chinese interpreter, and she said, "Look, who's in this bank?" I said, "The only people who are in this bank are old people and foreigners." Right, and, and, and this was true. Deng Xiaoping insisted upon two things. Sometimes people only quote one. The, the one which everybody quotes is that you have to be a follow a specific country path of development. That is the Chinese characteristics, and it's, it's quite correct. Deng Xiaoping said this many times. But Deng Xiaoping also said something else, which people don't quote so much, and they're wrong. He said also, we follow the laws of economics. We are applying the laws of economics in a specific country. This means that the path of development, of opening up, of globalization, of the state sector of the economy, corresponds to the, to the laws of economics. So these are the two fundamental features that made this success. Some people say that the question of globalization is in a name of a, name of a best-selling book is the world is flat. But that's not quite true. It, it, globalization has not made the world flat equal. You have a big process of regionalization. Take, for example, um, North America. You have the United States and you have Canada and Mexico are in a trade agreement. You have, in Europe, you have, of course, the formation of the European Union. And what happens there is that you have one very strong growing economy, or several strong growing economies, help the other economies around them. So the the interchange between Canada, Mexico and the United States is very high. What, what the Belt and Road Initiative really is doing is creating the same type of process in, in Asia and in stretching a long, long way across Asia. I mean, I know that some non-Asian countries are part, but actually the most important part of it is the part in Asia. This means this is creating very, very strong regionalization. So you're getting really three very big centres of development in the world economically. One is centred in North America, one is centred in Europe, and the other is centred in China and the Belt and Road Initiative. That's, that's the way I see it.